Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The sum and peace out to the rest of you. This is Black Horse Sign of Black In Again. You know what I'm going to ask you to do. And why I'm going to ask you to do it. I learned two things a little while ago from my non Ados wife. And I'm just going to talk about them. Tell you what they are. And I'm going to jump off. Because it's late and I want to go to bed. Because I'm a lazy nigga and it's my weekend. First thing I learned from my Ados wife. My non Ados wife. Sorry. I learned that apparently I'm more select than what I thought I was. And I've learned uh, that I'm more attractive to look at to women than what Ados women ever let me know. Now, I knew I wasn't ugly. I was never convinced that I was ugly. I was convinced that a lot of black women who's who said that I was ugly really thought so I was convinced that the ones who said it really believed it themselves um, until I was about 24 when I was finally told what was going on the whole time and that it really wasn't about me being ugly it was about me being pale but I still didn't understand uh, I still didn't understand how far uh, women's expressions were from their true opinions until earlier today when my wife said something and the way she said it was as though she took for granted that I already knew this like it wasn't any news to me she's asked me before a certain question and I gave her the honest answer and, but she forgot about that today when she was talking she just sort of took for granted that I, I must have known this. And I was able to conceal my surprise and my shock. But it explains something else I'd heard before. That's the first thing. Now, I say this for this reason. And that is that I'm damaged goods. I've been, I became damaged goods trying to impress the Eidos bitch, Sapphire. Not every last one of them was a ratchet. Most of the time they were not, but that was the whole problem. I became broken trying to impress the ones that weren't ratchet because they had the same standards as a ratchet while they were swearing up and down that they weren't like the ratchet. All the confusion and mixed messages and the lying did a number on me. And I became da uh, damaged goods because of the years of confusion and mistreatment um, and gaslighting. I'm not the only man, and that's why I'm talking about this. If I was the only guy, I'd say, okay, well, what the hell did I do wrong? But we're now finding out through social media that a lot of us didn't have to do anything wrong. We were simply targeted for fuckery in the first place. Simply put, we just, we had those kinds of faces. They didn't have to be ugly. We simply had innocent faces, and that's all it took. That was enough. We were marks. We were targets, and we, we had to do and be and know more than other guys had to do in order to get the same results. And what I'm coming to find out is that uh, this was for nothing. But I always know something. I always know that there are other brothers that were better than me, and they went through worse. So if I went through this, what did a lot of brothers who are better than me go through? Brothers who, have, who got better memories, mentally sharper than I am. They had to go through hell. That's not fair to them. I mean, what I went through was a lot of confusion, but this means that some other brothers must have had to go through absolute, even worse treatment. The few times I was threatened with violence or had a woman swing at me, and I didn't even connect a lot all the time. I only got hit a few times. Other brothers out there, they must have been hit more times. So what this means, again, they got quite a few brothers out there walking around that are damaged goods and they're damaged by the Eidos woman, they're damaged by Sapphire. Whether she's the ratchet stereotype of Sapphire or whether she's Sugar Hill stereotype Sapphire. Whichever one. Damaged by Sapphire. And the damaged goods. To this day. So what this means is that there are certain things they cannot do to make women happy because they simply don't even know about these things. Or they've been told and convinced that that wouldn't work anyway. And, and they really believe that women would not like X, Y, and Z. Or they've been shown that anything they do is subject. And that's the most common thing. They've been shown that anything they do and anything they say is subject to be misinterpreted in whichever way she has to view him to not like him. So if he holds the door open, he's disrespecting her. If he doesn't hold the door open, he's disrespecting her. 
Now do you get it? It's fucked up, isn't it? I need to quit cussing. Sorry about that. But you understand they got a lot of brothers out there walking around. They've been broken. They've been lied to. They've been deceived, damaged, and, and now they really would not know. The only thing they know is that they're going to be judged very harshly by the Eidos woman or by the Western white woman. Even if they're really smart, they really know that because a lot of brothers don't know that the Western white woman is going to be even worse because they ain't dealt with her. They know good dudes that have, but they ain't dealt with her. So I'm going to go ahead and say it. I learned this. And. I mean, I've learned about secret crushes before retroactively after the fact. This last summer, I learned about my own childhood neighbor checking me out when we were teens, but hiding it and not hiding her crush on other men or other guys. Um, we were teens at that point. So I learned about that retroactively, and all it took for her was to be cute and have a big breast. Nothing, and nothing else was really necessary. Um, then... Um, that that's all it took for her to look at me and decide, okay, well, I can't, I'm, I'm too good to show that I'm interested in him at all. Okay. You won. <laughs> there you go. You got it. You showed it. You, I believed it. I never thought you was fine. Fair enough. You won. Now I'm not saying I would have gotten with her. The point I'm making is that somebody else had the option but I did not have, I did not even know that I had this appeal to her, and she's just one of many that was like that. I found out about secret crushes, but what I'm finding out now today was that apparently I was supposed to just know and take it for granted. I wasn't supposed to have any doubt about it as to how many and how often this, how, how many times this would have happened, how often this would have happened. That's how. I'm not going to say what the conversation was like. It doesn't matter. The point I'm making is that that I found this out because the way she said it was just so nonchalant that I should have just known and taken it for granted. And before I caught myself, before I, was, before I could say, wait a minute, no, I didn't know about this. That's the first thing I learned. Let me tell you the second thing I learned. I learned that in her community and in any other community, since we like to say that everybody's better than we are and act like every other community is not broken and we're the only ones who are, because in the United States, we only get to see the ones that the U.S. let in anyway. I'm going to go ahead and use every other community as an example of something just to explain this to us. Although they are broken times or about a little more or less broken than we are, the point I'm making is that in no other community would somebody like Jason Kidd be able to get the women to blame the men if he did something like this? There is no other community that would turn around and blame its men because some outside guy was able to go in and pass out 700 cases of HIV. It is only in our community. And this is really what makes us the laughing stock. See, black men aren't the laughing stock because a white guy came in and did this to six, seven hundred black women. Black men are the laughing stock because we're sitting up here saying, how did we fail? That's why. There's an understanding that uh, in other uh, communities that if the women turn into hoes because of westernization or because of whiteization, that it's, that's not on the men. Unless, of course, they start simping and tolerating it. So in reality, the black men who um, say, OK, we're done with the scraggle daggle and we're done with the Eidos bitch and, you know, we're going to leave her and go to somebody else are, um, are, are the ones that aren't being laughed at. The ones who stay with the ones who stay loyal to sisters knowing about this are the ones that get laughed at. So in other words, I wouldn't be laughed at because I said, OK, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to marry an Eidos woman. I'm damn sure never going to pursue one. Um, I'm not laughed at for that. People understand that. Now, if I hated black women, period, as an entire racial category, then people would look at me like, what the hell's wrong with this dude? But if I simply say, well, I'm not going to marry the Western black woman because of the slut and thoughtism and all that, then no, they wouldn't laugh. They wouldn't do that. They would laugh if I couldn't get one that's childless 
and then I can only get one that's got kids and use the piece leaving out of shape and then I settle for it and I don't jump ship, then I would be laughed at. That's when I'd be laughed at because other men are like, look, we know our women, they like you. They don't even have to hate us. They just, they like you. So why would you settle for this big old, oh my God, are you serious, man? Yeah, that's, that's actually what happens. It is laughable to others if they know what's going on. And a lot of them don't even know about the DJ Kid case. But it is laughable to others that black men who had nothing to do with this are being blamed. Not the fathers of the women that didn't supervise them. Not the pimps that may have pimped the women out. And there probably were none anyway. The point I'm making is that black men who had nothing to do with it are being blamed. And this is really what is laughable to other communities if you want to know the truth. That's what I learned today. That's it. I want y'all to let that stir around in your brains for a little bit. Not that other communities are always role models for us. Sometimes they are, and other times we're role models for them. If you really want to know the truth, it depends on what the topic is. But when it comes to this, blaming men because the women act like thoughts and hoes, that is laughable. Now, if we let them do it, if we had the control, if we had control of the nation and its laws, maybe they laugh at it, maybe not, because a lot of them are dealing with the same thing in their own countries. They're dealing with it in a little bit more subtle of a form, but hell, Tunisia um, had an uproar at some point because under Islamic law, a Muslim woman can only marry a Muslim man, not a non-Muslim man. Under Islamic law, Tunisia was going to scrap that part of Islamic law and just let it go. They were about to do it, and it caused an uproar. Now, what was the reason that they were about to do it in the first place? It's very simple. Not only the new leadership, but also the, the feminist push in Tunisia. They were about to go through this. The rest of the country finally said, wait a minute, hold the effing phone. You mean to tell me that because some feminists have raised their voice, you're going to let them sell their religion and their pussy for some extra money because Europeans aren't Muslim? That's what you're going to do? These European guys that are not Muslim, they'd love to marry a Tunisian Muslim because they just want to take her out of a religion and because, of course, Tunisia's got a worse economy than Europe. That's all they want to do it for. There's, they don't have any other reason they want to do it. So miss me with that bull. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, some Tunisian women said, we don't want a Tunisian man or any, we don't want any North African man in general. We want that European white man because he got money. So go ahead and let us marry them, even though the religion prohibits it. That's all it was. Last I heard, the government repealed it. Maybe they didn't, but that's what the last thing I heard. The other thing, too, is this. Um. Other thing is that at the end of the day, uh, and this goes. This, this is not a third thing I've learned. I said I learned two things today, but this is just a part of the second thing I'm, I'm getting at, and that is that um, nobody thought to blame the Tunisian men because of the money they don't have. Everybody understands that North Africa in general was impoverished relatively because of the French colonization and the British colonization and the Italian colonization. Everybody understands that. Everybody gets that. They didn't impoverish themselves. They're just doing the best they can considering it. Everybody knows that. The Tunisian women who were feminists when were silenced and they were laughed at for trying to blame Tunisian men for being poor. Same thing happened in some other places, too. You've got a whole culture. Do you think it's Thai men that are uh, going and, and buying up all that punani in Thailand? Actually, a lot of them are doing it. That is true. Many of them are doing that. But by the same token, they're not buying up the majority of the punani. Nobody ever stops to blame. Nobody thinks of blaming Thai men because Thai women are selling the pussy to survive in that economy. It doesn't cross people's minds. And you got fathers in these rural farming villages who will say, we're not going to be able to raise this much. But you, you're pretty, you're cute, you need to go to the city and sell that pussy and send some money back. Daughter, you do have this. No one stops to think and sit up and point the finger at Thai men in general, even for, for, even because of those who openly tell their daughters, go to the city and sell that vagina. 
because Buddhism's not that strict against prostitution anyway. That's what's going on. That's what actually was not going on. Nobody sits up and says, well, the Thai men are failures and they're not protecting their women. You got a whole nation and Dave Chappelle did a joke about this. In the Philippines, you got a lot of men that got emasculated because their wives were able to find jobs before they could abroad. So their wives are working and sending money back home while the dads are home with the kids. That's real. Nobody sits up and blames the Filipino men because everybody understands that the Philippines got colonized by Spain and then by America. And the impoverishment is just part of institutionalized economic white supremacy. Your nation's not white and it's not siding with white against black. So therefore, it's going to be impoverished. End of story. Nothing else. That's what's going on. They're not being blamed for these things and they're victims of white supremacy as well. But we are being blamed because we got victimized by white supremacy and we'll be blamed. We're being blamed for everything and giving credit for nothing, even when we do it right. My wife said to me, Blackheart, I know you care about black folk in general, but I'm just going to tell you straight away. It's not worth it to go and try to fight. If you ever did have to go back stateside, just look after you and your, and your daughters and me. Don't try to fight for your people because they ain't worth it. My people ain't worth it. I tried this with my people and she's talking about an African nation and they're Muslim. And she was like, my people ain't worth it. There, there are um, certain un-Islamic customs that we're holding on to, and finally the youth are getting rid of them, but you know, the youth are also involved in gangs and drugs, and you can't tell them to get out of it. They're not going to listen, not to me, not to you, not to anybody else. Let them take themselves out. Once someone tells them this is not the way to go, and they know it because they're Muslim, let them go and take themselves out and get out of the community. We don't need them. We need them gone. Because they're willing to go into drugs and gangs when they don't have to. You're dealing with the people that are willing to get involved in every type of psychological abuse of each other that they don't have to. You can't save them from this. It's not your fault that this guy went around and stuck it in six. Uh, how many women did you say he gave AIDS to? Black. I was like, between six and seven hundred. Okay, that many. Wow. They have something's got to be so wrong for him to be able to do that that a man like you can't possibly be responsible for that that's what she explained she pretty much said she pretty much said that we who listen to them blame us are, are insane for even listening to that she came to that she, that's what she said to us said, said to me why would you even let them finish a sentence if they tell you that so this guy does this. You didn't do it. And you're being blamed. But it's your fault. You had nothing to do with it. You didn't even know what was going on. You were here when it happened. But somehow you're at fault. Mm -mm, no, no. In my community, the women that had nothing to do with this wouldn't be blamed. How would the men who have nothing to do with this be blamed? The man that would be blamed is a man that has something to do with it. Starting with the guy that did it. That's what she that's what she told me. But not only that, the reaction of the community when I told her about that, because she asked. That had her putting her head in her hands as if to say, why would you do that? Why would they? It's just like the robber blaming the victim for having valuables in their home. And that's why he had to break in and steal them. It's like like that that's how she compared it oh my god I can't go back and fight for black America if I wanted to anyway as a Muslim hijra meaning flight or, or relocating to a position where you're strong and more able to practice your religion is a valid concept and to be able to practice my Islam and my blackness I had to leave the United States if I had to go back, I would be ruined. And I asked God to make me stronger in faith and then take my life before that ever happens.
take me back to himself and forgive my sins before that happens. Unless, of course, America changes and we know it's not going to change for the better. It's just it never has and it's never going to. I want you all to understand that if you know of a way to fight for black folks from inside of America, go ahead. But if you find that our people are not worth it, you find that our people will not show appreciation for it. If you find that our people will take your sacrifice and piss it away the way that we did with Malcolm's sacrifice. Don't do it. We're not the first people to ever have to leave our homeland and start over somewhere else. And frankly, the homeland that we're talking about leaving is not even the first homeland we had. You know we had to get kidnapped and drug over to that one. Sometimes you do have to leave to be able to come back more powerful. Though. That does happen as well. It happened in our religion. The Muslims had to leave Mecca. They had to go to Abyssinia first, then to Medina. There eventually did come a day when they marched into Mecca and they weren't even opposed. And to this day, if I want to fulfill the fifth pillar of my faith, I have to go to Mecca. Medina's always the option, but Mecca's the one to which I must go. So do you understand now that you may simply, that the best thing for us may be to not even stay there fighting for us? It may be to go and ask God to do some things to that nation without us there to die from the upheaval that would enable us to go back and get our due out of it. It then may be what it takes. I hope that what I've said is a benefit because going back there to fight for you ignorant ass niggas sure ain't. Salam alaikum.